The field of magnetic resonance guided focused ultrasound attracted me very much because I was for many years interested in non-invasive diagnostic procedures using magnetic resonance techniques. And now this gives me the possibility of moving from non-invasive diagnostics to non-invasive image guided brain interventions. And this is, a, for me, it's a great step forward. This new technique is non-invasive. That means we are not opening the skull. We are not opening the brain. We are not inserting any device, neither in the brain nor in the body. It is real-time image guided. We know exactly what we are doing. We see it on the screen. And it is also real-time temperature guided. And therefore, and we do it on the uh, awake patient without anesthesia. So the patient is responding. We have constantly a contact with the patient. He can tell us how is he is feeling. But, so we have physical contact, physical control to the patient, neurological control to the patient, and we know exactly from the screen where we are operating. In this sense, magnetic resonance guided focused ultrasound cannot be compared to older stereotactic ablative procedures in the past which have been blind interventions with good success, but also with sometimes severe side effects. The future of magnetic resonance image guided focused ultrasound in the brain, what we are doing, I think has a large field. We are presently working with this technology using high intensity focused ultrasound. That means we are, we are heat coagulating diseased tissue in the brain. But this system, this technology can also be used with other physical parameters like low intensity focused ultrasound or even other frequencies to manipulate different pathophysiological or physiological uh, systems. So in other words, focused ultrasound is not only an, ablat an ablative surgical procedure, but it can be used in the future, what we are already doing now experimentally and start even in the clinics, for neuromodulation. That means to trigger neuronal circuits to elicit certain answers, to stop or to evoke a response. And then to see, you know, what, how the mechanisms are, the physiological, pathological mechanisms are that are uh, playing a, a role in a specific disease. Mm -hmm. So this would be one direction. Another direction would be opening the blood-brain barrier, what we are also doing experimentally now, and uh, some people have already started in the clinic. The blood-brain barrier is a nice an insulation, actually, of brain vessels that hinder substances of crossing the brain, that hinder, actually, a poisoning of the brain in the daily life, except for alcohol, as we know with a small molecule. But neuropharmacology in cancer, for example, or for treating neurodevelopment, uh, neurodegenerative diseases are usually macromolecules, large molecules, large chemicals that do not cross the blood-brain barrier, that are hindered. And if we are able to open temporarily the blood-brain barrier at the spot where we want the, the agent to enter the brain and treat a certain disease, this would open up, or is opening up, actually, a vast field of targeted drug delivery for the future of neuropharmacological treatment.